the following material may not be suitable for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Yeah, that's right. Broadcasting live from the cultural void of Independence, Ohio, a truncated version of the Rick Gilmore program. Well, welly, well, well. If you'd like to call in the classic 216 area code, the phone number is 578-1100. Great big voice man, who am I and who are we? He's so reliable. The Rick Gilmore Show on News Radio WTAM 1100. Toll free, we pick up the dime, 888 723 WTAM. Open Phones America this evening. Take you until 10 o'clock when you'll get to Drudge Report. Drudge Report Live from 10 until 1. Wanted to tell you about an event before I get into things, an event that I have planned. So mark this on your calendar. A farewell to Oldsmobile cruise-in. Got it all planned out. Saturday, June 19th from 5 to 9, 5 to 10. We can stay however long we want to at the big boy. Write this down. If you got an Oldsmobile or you just want to come and hang out and meet and greet or shake hands or meet your buddies or whatever, at the big boy, the Manor's big boy at West 130th and Brook Park Road. So we got your grub in your bathrooms. I got, got a DJ all lined up for your Oldsmobile cruise-in. Got it all arranged. That's for Saturday, the 19th of June. And if it rains, the rain date would be for the 26th, would be the next, the next week later. So the day before Father's Day, I'm having an Oldsmobile cruise-in at the Big Boy at West 130th. I don't care what year Oldsmobile, you can bring a 1904 with tiller steering, or you can bring a brand new one. Uh, the only person I have not contacted about this yet, I've got uh, everything's written in stone, except for an Oldsmobile dealership. So if you work for one or you own one, climb over each other and get a hold of me here at the radio station. Let me know. I, Earl Olds is right up the street. There's Gene Norris. There's, there's ones out in Elyria and Lorraine. They're all over. So climb over yourselves to be the Oldsmobile dealership, to be at Rick Gilmore's little farewell to the Oldsmobile cruise in. We got overflow parking in the rear behind the big boy there at West 130th. I repeat again, that's June I'll tell you about it later on the program, too. June 19th. So break out that Oldsmobile and drive on over. We'll have a good time. And if, like I say, if you work for an Olds dealer, I haven't reached out for one yet, so climb over each other, if you must. Climb over each other to try to be the Oldsmobile dealer to, to, to bag the show. You know, you could bring some cars and some promotional stuff and have a little display there and try and move out some of your... Last of the Oldsmobile stock before it's all gone. GM quit making the Oldsmobile, and I thought, how appropriate. Everyone knows someone who owns an Oldsmobile. Everyone. Written in stone. Because you won't be able to afford to drive. You got yourself a nice 442. Got yourself some big Olds 98 convertible or something. It's going to come a time here seeing as we're dealing with post-peak production and as far as oil goes. Look at the price of fuel. Pretty soon you're not going to be able to afford to drive that big car. There's going to be lots of collector's cars sitting around collecting dust. Gas in Hawaii is up to 219 on the average. The average price of gasoline around has had the biggest jump since August, last August. Trilby Lundberg says, uh, she's an analyst there, says prices are up more than 10 cents a gallon in the past two weeks. National average is $1.96. Why? Lundberg said that the supplies, rising demand, and seasonal environmental regulations caused a price adjustment. Is that like a wardrobe malfunction? It's a price malfunction, apparently. San Diego had self-serve regular at two and a quarter a gallon. Now, I've been having problems with my car lately. And I think it's going to crap out on me. Well, maybe it's time for a smaller, newer used car. Something like that. I repeat, Open Phones America, taken anywhere you want. I did want to touch on, of course, the, you know, the, the events going on over there with the pictures coming out of Iraq of prisoner abuse. They're going to try and court-martial Jeremy Sibbets. He said, uh, his dad said he was trained as a truck mechanic, not a prison guard. 
And he would have gotten in big trouble if he had not followed orders to take those pictures. He was told to take pictures. But wait until that comes out more and more. Don Rumsfeld's getting mad at everybody. Get off Ru I'm sorry, Cheney's getting mad at everybody about Rumsfeld. Get off Rumsfeld's back, he says. Let him do his job. Leave him alone. Can you imagine what it would be like in an election year while we've got two wars going on if they had to come up with a new Secretary of Defense and the Senate had to have confirmation hearings? It would be a nightmare. Would I be displeased if Don Rumsfeld resigned? Not in the least. Did you watch any of the hearings? If you didn't get a chance to watch them, you were at work or you heard about them. I mean, we're, now we're in apologize mode. We're sorry. The president apologizing on Arab TV. We're sorry. We're sorry it happened. We're sorry the abuse happened. And, and of course they're sorry it happened. But it's human nature, unfortunately. Gulf One had, what, the highway of death? How about the Bataan Death March in World War II? And it seems to me it's human nature when you get people together in a situation like this that there's going to be prisoner abuse. And the Nazis and the Jews. Now, that was the ultimate prisoner abuse. Or the, the Taliban uprising at the, at, the, at the prison there in Afghanistan, remember, where they had to kill everybody. Well, what are you going to do? Rehabilitate them? Are you going to tell religious fanatics that, okay, you lost. Now go out there and don't do it again. No, 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 no. They're not doing this because... Of, they're doing it because... Of, because they're because of God. And see, when you throw God into the mix, now all of a sudden, it, now that's written in stone, right? Now that's written down where there's just, there's just no way around this. It, it can't end until they win. It cannot end until they win. I suppose everything's subject to change. Right? The Lord has given unto you these fifteen, ten, ten commandments. Dennis, you're on the air. Hi, how are you? All right. Go right ahead. I cancel my radio. I had yeah, turn your radio I down. On the porch, uh, radio is off. There you go. Now you'll be able to hear me. Now, you betcha. You know, uh, you talk about Oldsmobiles. Yes. I had a friend that had a knife. I... I can't get this quite straight exactly, but I think it was about a 1987 Olds 98. What a tank. Uh, 87? I think it was about 87. Okay, yeah. Well, you know, Olds 98s are great cars. They ride like bank vaults, nice and quiet. And I mean, Oldsmobiles were always... If, 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 if I were out choosing a GM to buy, uh, Oldsmobile would probably be pre pretty near the top of the list. Because it seems okay. to me you're getting caddy quality at, at a Pontiac price. Can I, can, I, can I bring up one more thing? Sure, sure. Okay, you mentioned, uh, oh, I'm trying to think what it was, because uh, I know I worked at a Shell station when I was a kid. I'm 52. I worked at a Shell station when I was like 14 years old, and we had two carts, and they were both the same, the Plymouth uh, with the 225 Plan 6. You mean like a Dart and a Valiant? Pardon? Like a Dart and a Valiant, how like Dodge and Plymouth are both like they're pretty close to looking the same, but yeah, 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 with that slant six that would run forever, it seemed like, except that the car around it, the car around it would fall apart. <laughs> I, I, but Gilly, I gotta tell you something. I love listening to you. I wish you were on more often. Well, I appreciate that, Dennis. Not, well, I really do. I really wish you were on more often. So do I. I honestly, well, I'm sure you do. <laughs> yeah, I think you got a vested interest in one PM more often. Yep. Dennis, I got to run. Uh, I appreciate you checking in. Yeah, yeah. What am I supposed to do about that? Tim from Langley, Virginia. Hi, Rick. Hello. Hey, Rick, about those terrible photos that America has been subject to from uh, Baghdad. You know, I, I want America to know that the DOD is uh, prosecuting privates, specialists, and sergeants. Uh, we're going to bring them up on charges in two weeks, so America should be comforted. We must protect the uh, higher-ups, so uh, 
we're going to put on trial, I think in two weeks in Baghdad, uh, this specialist from uh, Pennsylvania. Right. And I think America should be comforted uh, because America and Donald Rumsfeld, uh, we're, we're in control over there. And this specialist and then that private, that girl from West Virginia, uh, she did some terrible things down there at the prison. And I think uh, the DOD is on the ball. And I think, Rick, uh, you should uh, notify uh, the Clevelanders in America that the uh, DOD people are on the ball. All righty. With his tongue firmly planted in his cheek, Tim, no doubt. Yeah, we, uh, we don't dare want to you know, have anybody, any higher-ups get, get in a ringer, do we? Yeah, so we'll, we'll blame it on the privates, and the truck mechanics, and people, people that were ordered to. Yeah, that, that would be an interesting situation to be in. Not that anyone would, not interesting in a good way. If you're ordered to do something and you're in the military and you're ordered to do something you, that you don't want to do, morally, that you don't want to do, but you know if you don't do it, you're going to get in big trouble. You know, I, I wonder about that occasionally. You think, gee, do you think somebody that... Say, say you're in the German army during World War II when they... Did they did, did, did people volunteer to be a prison guard at Dachau or Bergen-Belsen or Auschwitz? I mean, did, did they line up because they hated Jews so much and homosexuals so much they couldn't, they couldn't wait to get in line to be a prison guard and poke people with sticks and beat them and starve them to death and gas them? Or were some of those guards told what to do and decided, gee, otherwise... I mean, did it cross their mind at all that, gee, otherwise, once this war is over, one way or another, they're going to have to answer to God? And how could I fail to mention that today is Mother's Day? How could I fail to mention that? Happy Mother's Day to my mom and to my Aunt Patty with an I. She's not really my aunt, but to Patty with an I. Stop smoking! All right. Hmm. And, and a beautiful Mother's Day it was, too. The weather was very cooperative, at least around, at least around these parts. Tony, you're on the air. Hello, oh, Rick. How are you doing this evening? All right. Okay, I'd like to say uh, it's a great show you got. And this golf show with this guy, what's his name? Gary Truisano? Yes. Yeah, that guy is worse than his brother. <laughs> he should be down the dial at WKNR. Sir, sir, you didn't call up and badmouth my station brethren. Dave, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Rick? All right. Uh, they should have... No, seriously, have you heard about the uh, Chechen uh, rebel uh, well, uprising that, that they killed the president of, of uh, Chechnya? Yeah, I was uh, getting there. You know, imagine this. Here you are at a celebration. You didn't hear about Kent State this year, you notice? Know well, I guess we didn't hear about Kent State this year. That's about the first year that nobody brought it up. You're getting ahead of yourself. Let's go back to Chechnya. Okay. Here they are in the stands, sitting there for a celebration and the... And then the, the president blows up. Sounds to me yeah, like... It's a landmine, isn't it? Right. Well, I, I, hold on. Oh, gee, hold on a second. It's a conversation. We go back and forth. It sounds to me like their security is a little lax over there, isn't it? Or somebody, uh, okay. some pretzel vendors planted the, the landmine in there. Well, now, now, now go ahead with what you were saying after that. They had to have a call, uh, a, a program where the government uh, just called and adores you. There you go. We need, we, need, we need a program where everyone just calls and says how much they love me and how I need more airtime. Triple dot the forecast from TV3 meteorologist Betsy Kling. Thunderstorms possible here and there tonight. Low in the 60s. Currently, it's 79 degrees. Tomorrow, mid-80s. And then Tuesday, rain's coming back. Well, what are you going to do? You'll have that. It is spring. Tomorrow morning on the big one, the guests include... Senator John McCain, who in my opinion has turned into a whack job, but that's just me. Get the latest on the prisoner abuse over there. Wake up and form. Don't be a dum-dum, would you? Listen to Wolves and Coleman in the morning, weekdays, 5 until 9 here on the big one. News Radio, WTAM 1100. Yeah, I don't know about John McCain. See, it's, it, well, obviously, I, I guess uh, he, would, he would be the guy that they'd choose to have an opinion on prisoner abuse since he was in the Hanoi Hilton. Now, I just was overhearing a conversation last night where somebody said he was pretty, treated pretty well while he was over there. 
And I don't know about that. I thought he said he can't lift his his hands above his elbows. You know what I mean? He can't lift his hands over his head anymore because of the abuse that he took over there. I, I don't know what... Seems to me that I thought that was pretty well documented. I don't know where this person got the idea that all of a sudden that, that didn't happen. You know, it's like the Holocaust, right? It didn't happen. I don't know about that. Mike. Yeah, Gilly. Yes. You know, I'm glad you got off talking about your stupid car being messed up and got back in the real, you know, thought process of what you are about. Gee, I spend, what, one hour, one night talking yeah. about my car being broken, and now yeah. I've, I've, I've changed the world. I'm hanging up on your ass. People like you just annoy me. You need a life. I'm here for news and entertainment purposes two hours a week. An hour and a half this week. And then you, what, you waited all week to call and tell me how, you know, years and years and years ago, I had a program director named Bobby Hatfield when I first started here about seven years ago. And he warned me, he said, Rick, there's 65 people work at this radio station. That's not counting how many, how many thousands and thousands upon thousands of callers you'll have over the years. He said, I want you to have a long illustrious career in radio. But remember one thing. Everyone is a program director. Everyone will try and tell you how to run your show. And by God, Hatfield, you were right. <laughs> by gum. Mike, you're on the air. Yeah, I'd uh, like to make some comments about this uh, the prison guard abuse. Absolutely. Um, well, well, the situation is, I, was, I spent 22 years in the military. Okay. And the situation is, is um, those are unlawful orders, and you're, you're not a, obligated to follow those orders. Aha! So, and, uh, if you're told to do something, you can go up the chain of command and say, I'm not doing this. Uh, it's, it's unlawful. Well, a part of being in, in the military is, uh, um, you know, courage. And some of that courage is going to have to come when you're faced with the more dilemma, what you know is right and lawful, and uh, what you're um, going to decide to do about it. And you have to have the courage to stand on that. I know that these people are young. But uh, it's not an age-defined term. It's uh, either you are going to live by uh, that code that is the military or you're not. So uh, that they followed orders, um, it wasn't the excuse that was uh, uh, during the war crimes, during World War II, uh, the guards, the SS guards, they said the same thing. And, and that wasn't a reason for them. So um, it certainly cannot be a reason for our uh, military people either. Of course, the entire invasion was an Ill illegal, imperfect, unjust war. It wasn't exactly a war, right, because the, uh, supposedly all the fighting ended af after, before 60 days was up. And, of course, we've lost more since the fighting ended uh, than we had during the fighting. So, I mean, the whole operation was not exactly the way that you're supposed to stomp around in a sovereign nation that hasn't attacked anybody. Well, I mean, as a part of being in the military is, uh, you know, uh, you don't make those decisions. The decisions are made higher up, and uh, your job is to go where you get told to go. But there are certain rules and requirements that are made of you and uh, what you're expected, the rules you're expected to follow and or not follow. But doesn't it seem like it is interesting, like the one caller stated, that it, perhaps it, perhaps it's not going up the chain of command as far as the blame game now. Now they're picking on the people that, I mean, it, 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 are, are they, in their infinite wisdom, supposed to be smart enough to, I mean, the, the, you, you were in the military a long time. Aren't there some dum-dums that'll just blindly follow orders without questioning? Uh, uh, there obviously is, uh, just like uh, anywhere you work. Um, the, the people that are higher up, they're certainly going to pay, too, just like I think uh, Mr. Rumsfeld will probably uh, eventually, before this is all said and done, will probably end up paying the price for this. Um, right now, it's just a hot topic. they got some names. They have uh, pictures of people. Um, I, I'm probably about 100% positive that none of the higher up... Uh, uh, commissioned officers were probably not present for this, even though they probably knew what was going on, maybe even condoned it. I'm sure they probably will not be found in any pictures. But uh, I think as these investigations go on, um, people are going to start dropping names. How about this? Did you know that this story came out, you know, in what, January, mm -hmm. February, whatever it came out, and CBS held on to it because they were waiting for 60 minutes or whatever to have a, a show about it. And then Richard Myers called Dan Rather, you know, Richard Myers from the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and said, hold the story more. And I thought, that would be like me reporting about a tornado two weeks later. Uh, uh, what's, what's this holding news stories? Uh, I, I want the news now. I, I, feel, I feel like, again, the dumbing down of America. We don't need to know what's going on until they decide it's time we need to know it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's unacceptable. I mean, uh, 
Obviously, there's a lot of political things that go into that. It's still unacceptable, regardless of uh, the motivations for holding on to the story on CBS's part, and obviously from the, uh, the high-up military person that called and said, hold this story. Uh, apparently, um, from what I've read, <clears throat> excuse me, this has been going on since, like, October. And, uh, you know, now it's all come to light, and uh, how these higher-up military people couldn't have seen uh, pictures being taken and videos, and, you know, the Internet, it doesn't take long for something to get around the world. And you know this isn't over yet. There's more pictures coming. You no, know, they keep saying, yeah, I'm sure everybody's got these pictures, and some people, uh, you know, they're being looked at by, by people. I, I think you're eventually going to see a lot of heads roll. Um, it's just, I think it's just going to be a matter of time. Not that I condone the abuse of prisoners. I just think that people should take a lesson from somebody like Richard Nixon where he paid the ultimate price of having to give up the presidency of the most uh, strongest and most important job in the entire world, but then the presidency of the United States, because he had to tape stuff. Ne yes. Never tape stuff or take pictures. Of st not that I'm condoning that kind of behavior, but why are they taking pictures? Did they think that they could hide them in their hope chest and no one's going to find them? You know, I, I don't understand either. I mean, how many times have you seen where um, some you know, guys have stolen a car and uh, or did some you know they're shooting paintball guns at, at people on the side of the line. they're taping themselves yeah and and they get caught it, it almost always happens they get caught one of their friends says hey look at this before you know it they're caught they're on uh, america's most wanted or something yeah i mean it was like the um, like the guy years ago i heard a story about a woman was raped in her car and the guy's wallet fell out of his pocket <laughs> Now, if you're planning, I mean, like I say, not that I would condone any type of behavior like that. If you were planning on going out and raping someone, do you need your ID? I don't think so. I mean, it, it, it just goes to show you that these criminals are they're not uh, as intelligent as they think they are. Uh, at least the, uh, the local uh, hoods are not. Uh, I'm sure that the more uh, uh, sophisticated criminals are very good at covering their tracks, just like these, uh, these soldiers. Um, I, I, I believe I saw a picture where there was... Uh, it looks like two or three men kind of chained together, handcuffed on the floor. Uh, some people, uh, one person is like giving them instructions and other uh, soldiers looking. And there's four or five people that are just kind of milling about, like they're in the mall. No, oh, yeah, just... And, and, <laughs> and this is going on. Yeah, and they're just kind of wandering by, like, oh, that just sort of happens. And, and uh, basically what happened is someone just didn't have enough intestinal fortitude to step up and say, hey, hey, you know. And, uh, it's, and, it's amazing. It's, and, and if you're going to do that and you get squashed, well, then you do. Yep. That, that's what you're supposed to do. You're, you know, you're, this is the United States. We're supposed to do the right thing. And if you have bad consequences, you have bad consequences. Yep, Mike, I got to run. Thanks for checking in, Tiger. You make good sense. If you're on the line, be patient. I'll get to you after these important words and coverage of what in the world's happening. I'm Rick Gilmore, the thinking man's friend. More of the program coming right at you. This is Cleveland's only news radio. WTAM 1100. <laughs> The following material may not be suitable for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. I would really prefer a cup of cocoa. Well, then go have your cocoa. I would really prefer to give you a radio show. This is the second final and dreaded hour of the program. Taking you until the Drudge Report at 10 p.m. And that'll take you to coast to coast with Art Bell and all that overnight. Just keep it right here. And Cleveland's only news radio, right, big voice man? The Rick Gilmore Show on News Radio WTAM 1100. That's right, that's right. Yeah, shame, yeah, yeah. Phone number 578-1100 in the classic 216 area code. If you'd like to reach the program and you are impecunious, you don't have two quarters to rub together, you're broke, you're destitute, if you're living in a cardboard box and you got a big pickle jar for a bathroom, but you want to reach out and you want to talk to someone, your beacon on a fog-shrouded night, your lighthouse of information and entertainment, if you'd like to reach this program, toll-free, 723 wtam Last hour, discussed, uh, well, the prisoner abuse, obviously, that scandal is not going to go away. The father of private civets, or specialist civets, who's going to be facing court-martial, said he was just following instructions. He was, just a, he was trained as a truck mechanic. Just like the guy who fixed my car. He was a plane mechanic out of ASP3 out there in Berea. And my car is still bro broken. I don't know. And something, something, some, I hate that. You take your car in and it's got problems and then it seemingly is fixed because 
it won't do it. And then you leave and it doesn't. Or it, it would run perfect one day and then the next day I'm wondering whether I'm going to make it where I'm going. When it gets to the point where you're driving a car where you're carrying a cell phone with you, which I never do, just in case you got to make that call from the side of the road and not hoof it five miles to a telephone. Well, they claim there's more pictures coming. Do you think we should see them? Or just hear about them? Do we need to see them? I think we need to see them. And I think we need to see them because if they just tell you about them, it doesn't have the impact. And we're supposed to be the good guys, right? We're supposed to be the good guys. I'm telling you about, I got a cruise in coming up. It's not a show, just a cruise in for Oldsmobiles. Farewell to the Oldsmobile. It'll be Saturday, June 19th at the Big Boy at 130th and Brook Park. Start about 5 o'clock in the evening. You can get your grub at the restaurant. You can get, you'll have potties there. We'll have a DJ. We're just looking for some Oldsmobile dealer to be clamoring over the other Oldsmobile dealers to try and get a hold of me here at the radio station. Maybe you want to bring some new cars down. That's Saturday, June 19th. There's no charity involved. There's no money involved. There's no, it's not a show. It's just a cruising, just for fun. Something to do in the summer. Rick Delmore's farewell to the Oldsmobile cruise in Saturday, June 19th. We'll see the power of the radio. Well, I'll probably make up some flyers too. Because the price of gasoline is going through the roof. When it gets to $40 a barrel, all of those big old cars, I got a big old car that I keep in storage, and I think that's where it's going to stay for a while. Because it gets about eight, maybe ten miles to the gallon, and you have to use high test, you know? Give me Ethel if she's working. Boy, I was, that's a term you haven't heard in a long time, Ethel. High test. What do they call it now? Super? Is that a high grade? So the car won't ping, so it'll run properly. Well, you know what that stuff's up to? $2 and... Over $2 a gallon for high test, and I'm getting 8 miles to the gallon. I think that thing's going to end up sitting a lot. That's just crazy. Now, I know, I know. Adjusted for inflation. Well, the price of everything's just up, up, up. How about this one for a weird one? I thought I'd bring this to your attention. This is news you can use. I called my gas company about some questions about, no, just questions about my bill, and she said, well, you don't, you're not with us. I said, it's Dominion East Ohio, right? That, I mean, I have no choice. I'm in Cleveland. That's, she said, no, you, you switched at some point. I go, I'm looking at my bill. It says Dominion East Ohio. Well, no, that's, you're with Dominion East Ohio Energy. We're Dominion East Ohio Gas. And you're paying about 93 cents more per unit of gas that you buy than you would be for... Why? I, said, I don't know if you remember, if you're an avid listener to this program, about how I was slammed by AT&T on my long-distance service because it appeared on the bill. They sent me in the mail. It appeared that if I didn't send it back that they were going to switch me anyway because I'd already had it and that they were going to switch me away or something odd. And so I sent it back, and then all of a sudden I'm getting a bill from AT&T. And I was, I was slammed. Well, apparently I've been slammed by the gas company. So she switched me back, and I said, well, there'll be a fee. Well, Dominion East Ohio Energy charged me because I switched back. She said, quite possibly. Edmund, could you do me a favor? I seldom ask for favors from a good producer. Could you come in here and do something with the heat? Like, put it on 70 and push that little button or something. I don't want to wait till a break. I'm sitting here sweating. What, is it set on 75 or something? Take a look. What's it set on? In between? Yeah, put around 70 there and push the button, would you? We got the 75,000 square foot beautiful building. Let's put it to work. You know, in the old building, the heat and air conditioning it was, seemed to have a mind of its own. You ever had a building like that? Or it seemed like if the air conditioning broke in the middle of summer, on the weekend... They wouldn't get around to fixing it until Monday. And the, building just, the building manager decided, I guess, that people didn't work on the weekend. Well, most people didn't work on the weekend, but the people that did were trying to entertain and inform 38 states and half of Canada with a window open and wasps flying in and out and that sort of thing. Or we had a bat, too. We had a bat that got in the building because <laughs> we had to go outside to smoke and had an atrium, a little patio out there that Mike Trevisano, he knew I, I'm afraid of heights. 
and we're out on this little patio railing, and he put a $20 bill on the railing and said, here, Rick, come and get it. <laughs> he knew I wouldn't go over there and get it. Uh, acrophobia. Bernie, you're on the air. Yes, sir. It, it, the, the Democratic left, uh, the pundits today, they kept saying we haven't found weapons of mass destruction, and then they wanted to emphasize that because of the so-called sex scandal, that's a fundraiser for al-Qaeda and the terrorist networks. My point, Rick, is that the fundraising money is going into both the terrorist network's hands but also the Democratic left's hands at the same time. Why? Where were we last Sunday? Uh, on Meet the Press, Tim Russert had Kofi Annan. What was he talking about, Rick? The oil for food program. What didn't, uh, and the scandal, the $11 billion that, that dumped, got dumped where? Into a criminal network worldwide. What didn't, what didn't Tim Russert and also Doug Cliff and the plane did not want you to see that we should be speculating? It makes perfect sense that that money would go where? into a terrorist network to eventually buy a weapon of mass destruction. That is the system of a weapon of mass destruction. That's part of George Bush's success program. And that's what we should be telling the Muslim world because it's a say it was just a matter of time. Isn't that the way we spoke about Hitler, Rick? That uh, Hitler would eventually get the nuclear weapon. That's why, and that's how we honored our dead. We don't, but we're not going to honor the dead in America by saying that we basically stopped a system in which the terrorist groups would eventually gut that weapon of mass destruction to use in America. And my second very quick point, and I'm very upset about this, do you know that we are paying for religious education in Iraq and Afghanistan? They, they educate their children through free choice. It, it, any type of Islam they want, it, it, Judaism, Christianity, why aren't we talking about that? Do you know why? Because again, the Democrat, Democratic left doesn't want to point to the fact that there is a voucher system in Iraq, and that's what we have here in Cleveland, and, and they don't want to expand that because of the money that the NEA controls in our public educational system. So what they're going to do is we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to place those troops' lives in danger instead. And to me, that's pathetic. Okay. Wow. Bernie's long-winded. And he doesn't argue back and forth very well. He's called for years on and off. And there's no sense in me arguing with him because he doesn't... He's got a script, I think, but no argument to, to argue that it was the Republican right that, I, that got us into Iraq. That got us in there to begin with. You know how many veterans I've spoken with that said, You know, Rick, two thumbs up on Afghanistan, two thumbs down on Iraq. We were doing the right thing going into Afghanistan, trying to get the Taliban... But Iraq is a quagmire that we did not need to get into, and it's becoming pretty apparent that those people don't like us and don't want us there, or a lot of them don't want our help, and will fight to the end to try and kill as many American soldiers as possible. Isn't that their goal? And I would have to assume, if you could get inside the Iraqi mind, that they're looking at what happened to their country as a terrorist attack. I mean, if somebody came over here and said, I'm going to take over California and start unloading troops, or Texas, let's say they're mad at the president because of the decision he made in Iraq, so they're going to come over and take over Texas. Well, I don't think we'd just lie down and let them take I don't think the Texans would lie down and take it. Do you? Uh, I think there'd be a bloody battle. I don't know what we expected when we went in there. What do you think? You think we figured we'd just roll over them all and they'd all lay down their arms and welcome us with open arms? And I guess that's what we assumed. I mean, do, do you really think that if you're President Bush and you're looking at the present situation, which is not getting any better, do you think you would have done this? This little adventure? That's why I question America's foreign policy. If we have one... Because we certainly didn't have an exit plan. Are we going to get out of there by the end of June? Are you nuts? You really think so? Larry, talk to me. Hey, what's happening, Rick? Hey. Rick, you know, Rick, you were talking about a topic on the uh, gas pumping, I guess, where you mentioned um, that you were locked in a certain rate. Well, there's a program. We, I get basically um, Columbia Gas in Lorraine County, okay? Uh-huh. There's a program you can get called, uh, I think it's uh, Apples to Apples, a choice program. And what you do, you call in a number, and basically what you want to do is you get dump different suppliers. But I think East Dominion, well, I go through Columbia Gas, my main supplier, but you'll get a, a copy of a bunch of different suppliers with a cheaper rate you can go to, right? 
Well, what they did, though, was when I called them, I owe them uh, quite a bit of money. And I said, right. I, I really can't afford to pay you this, this huge lump sum that you seem to want. Are, and are it, you on a budget, Rick, or not? Well, yes. Well, they, they put me on even a, a better budget, but I have to, be with, I have to get my gas through them. But okay. she, she, I said, why? I thought I was getting my gas through you. And she said, no, you were slammed or switched or something, or you filled out a card, or you answered a phone call, or whatever they did. It must have been fairly deceiving, because otherwise I wouldn't have switched. See, what you got to do, Rick, like I mentioned, the different suppliers go to Apple and Apple, the customer choice program. Right, right. And what you do is you have different uh, providers. What you do is find exactly what their rate is, and you get cheaper rates, for example. Well, I mean, no, 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 i got to run. i got to go. Well, I'm not going to get in a long-winded dissertation about this. I just said, the only way I can pay this bill off, they, they take how much money you make, and blah, 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 but you have to be with them. That's the only way they'll put you on this program. You don't get a choice. You don't get apples to apples. I owe the gas company $71 a month for the rest of my life. But it has to be through them. You can't go choosing around. That's the only way they'll give you the program. Okay? Now Edmund writes me a note. Now it's hot on that side of the window over there, and now he's sweating. Did I put a thought in your head? <laughs> Actually, it's nice and cool in here now. Thank you for turning on the air conditioning. Now, you'll have to turn on the air conditioning in your room. And maybe close the door. I don't know. That's the problem you have in these office buildings. I don't know how, I don't know how the air conditioning and the, the heating can function when everybody leaves all the doors open. Because every room has a thermostat. And if you don't close the door, I think it's trying to air condition the entire building. Or heat the entire building because it can't read the room properly. I don't know how that works. What am I, an expert in that kind of thing? Matthew, you're on the air. Hey, Rick. How are you? All righty. I, just, I, I actually um, just want to talk to you for one moment. I actually listen to you all the time, and I I kind of have mixed feelings about Iraq, but you said we're supposed to be out by June. Do I have that right? June 30th is the date that we had picked that we were gonna, it was going to be all cleaned up and we'd be able to give Iraq back to the Iraqis and get out. Uh, well, and, and you're right. It, it, originally, that was the plan, but... I, uh, in fact, my mother-in-law is the uh, chief legal counsel for a congressman, um, and we we have no plans to be out of Iraq by June. Our plan is to hand over the government to the people there, and hopefully, God willing, have some kind of a government installed by then. But we're very well aware of the fact that we're going to have to be there and maintain a security force and, you know, so on and so forth. Well, I, 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 get the I get the impression that what we want to do is, yeah, turn, we don't want Baghdad. We don't want Fallujah. We want control of the oil fields, and then the people can govern themselves in the big cities. We, you know, we'll have to stick around to protect the oil fields. We're not going to stick yeah. around for their well-being. They can, they, can, they can police themselves. We're going to police the oil fields. Well, that's the problem when you put politicians in control. But what else are we going to do? I mean... There, there's no other clear option. Well, there was a I mean, clear... There was politicians, a, there was. Will screw up, politicians will screw up anything they touch. But without politicians, where are we? We live under Saddam? I, no, mean, no. I understand it's a screwy system, but without it, there, I understand that they think, okay, we want the oil. Well, we, they, we might. We might not. I don't know. The fact of the matter is, oil prices right now are at an all-time high. I'm a day trader. I trade the oil futures. I'm making money just because people are freaking out about the oil. But the fact of the matter is there's not that much less oil. Everyone's just scared about it. It's the same thing with unemployment and everything else. You can make money just by knowing what people are frightened of. And it's very rarely the actual thing that's going on that... So, uh, so uh, what, what you're saying is I should go to boogeyman.com or something and check out how I can invest in the monsters under the bed. Triple Apple forecast from TV3 meteorologist Betsy Kling tonight. Thunderstorms possible, low in the 60s tomorrow. Nice day, mid-80s, currently 79 degrees in Cleveland, 79. Check this out, we got this thing going on. Indians and Mike Trevisano are looking for a thing called... It's called a queen for a game. Remember that old show, Queen for a Day? This is Queen for a Game. Next Friday night on Ladies' Night at Jacobs Field, one lucky woman is going to be picked up by a limo, get a half-hour massage at the ballpark, 
Aw, oh, isn't that nice? Have dinner for two at the Terrace Club, get a tribe wardrobe from the team shop, and then watch the game on a throne with a tiara. Ladies can qualify to become queen for a game beginning tomorrow at 3 on the Mike Trevisano Show. So keep listening right here. Your home of the Indians. That's us, the big one. News Radio, WTAM 1100. Randy, you're on the air. Rick. Yes. What's up? Hey. Listen, uh, it's been bothering me for, I don't know, years. I've been listening to you and Mike Trevisano, and I, I, I have something to say, okay? Okay. Um, you know, we say that, you know, 38 states and half of Canada, you know, it can hear you. I just think that's a bunch of bull because... An example, today I'm in Cincy, I can't hear you. Well, let me tell you, that, that, oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Let, me, uh, let me tell you. All right, all right. At night, when it gets dark, all of the other stations that are around 1100 frequency have to power down because we were put together as an omnidirectional 50,000 watt station way back, way back in the 20s by the U.S. government to warn farmers in their fields of incoming weather or to have a national attack of some sort on the country, we would be able to reach people and tell them, and we okay. still can. Now, during right. the day, you've got 1110, you've got 1090, you've got other stations that are maybe 5,000 watts or, or 10 or 15 or whatever. They'll bleed over if you're right. way far right. away. But at night, that okay. phrase was coined by Pete Franklin years ago. Okay, okay. Rick, and Rick, that's, 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 that's a good point. That's okay. a good point. That's your, that's your, no, that's, a, that's your answer. I'm hanging up. That's not a good point. I think a point is something you ponder and then you consider whether or not it's the truth. I just told you your answer. I said the same thing on the phone. Oh, really? Yeah, Edmund, you told like, him the same thing and he he, it, he... he says that there has to be something more to it because when he tries it, whether it's day or night, he can never pick us up. My guess is his radio. That could very well be because I have listened to this station during the day. I listened to Wills and Coleman in the morning when I was in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, last last uh, July, uh, I drove down to Mississippi and listened from here to there, listened to Indians games there, and picked them up all the way back. So yeah, Why is it we get phone calls from as far away as Texas or Mississippi or, or Alaska. Florida, Alaska? Or you can listen online or streaming audio. Go to WTAM.com and check that out. Oh, Lord. Dick from Dayton, you're on the air. Hello, Rick. Howdy, howdy. How are you? Oh, I've been better. Why, why? Well, I'll pick you up, you know. Yeah, well, well you will. You're going to brighten my day. No, no, I'll give you. Hey, I just wanted to tell you, uh, you were speaking, I get you guys great at nighttime. See, that, well, I, I just gave that guy his answer, but he wanted to debate it. He want, well, we can't have that. Well, we can have a debate over something that's debatable. But right, it's, and he's better <laughs> appreciate you good people. Well, there you go. Now, hey, hurry up. Sir, I'm I getting... wanted to tell you something real quick. Yeah, hurry. Oh, well, I got to go, but... Uh, no, I got to go. I, I got to go is why you got to hurry. No, no, but... Yeah, the, yeah. The uh, 19th, you know... Yeah. That's a really good idea. I wish I could come up there and, and see those. See, I'm driving my mom's, I told you last week, my, the 89 Cutlass. It's pretty cool. Oh, okay. I, I got to run. I, uh, I know I don't recall what was said last week. There's been a lot of conversation between then and now, and that's great. You got an 89 Cutlass. And drive up here from Dayton and go to my, go to my farewell to the Oldsmobile cruise in at Big Boy at 130th and Brook Park on June 19th. You'll hear more about it. More of the program after these important words and coverage of what in the world's happening. I'm Rick Gilmore, the thinking man's friend on this lovely Mother's Day evening. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Coming right back at you. This is Cleveland's only news radio station, WTAM 1100. Rick Gilmore. The old saying was, run, Jesse, run. Yeah. The new one is Pull Out, Jesse, Pull Out. On News Radio WTAM 1100. I love this. I'm reading about Dick Cheney saying people should leave Rumsfeld alone. President, uh, well, the, you know, the, the abuse scandal in Iraq. President Bush said he admonished Rumsfeld last week over his initial handling. A rare public White House reference to a rebuke, but said that Rumsfeld would remain in his cabinet. We need to start at the bottom with anyone that took the pictures or was involved in the process of abusing prisoners and then make them talk. Who told you to do this? Were you told to do this? Okay, if you were told to do this, who told you to do it? Then you go to them. We're going to put you in prison. We're going to court-martial you and put you in prison if you don't talk. 
Who told you to do... Oh, you made the decision? Oh, okay, now you're getting court-martialed. A whole bunch of you is getting court-martialed because you didn't follow the rules. This is interesting. Ray, you want to tell me how to make bean soup? Hi, Rick. Howdy. Enjoy your program. Thank you. Listen to it every week. I wish you were on more. Okay. Well, this woman, she wanted to make bean soup, and she put 239 beans in there. I know why, because... And one, one more would make it too farty. Right, too farty. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you're welcome. We need crickets right now. We need cricket noises. If he's listened to the program for years... Hasn't he ever heard me do the Eileen McShay thing with I only put 239 beans in me bean soup because one more would be too farty? Now he's dusting off my old jokes and expects, I guess, to, I don't know, have a long, fruitful career as one of my favorite callers or something. I'm not exactly certain. Rich, you're on the air. Hey, Jerry, how you doing? All right. Well, I'll tell you what, man. That guy that called earlier, he says he can't pick you up. Well, I'm over here about 15 minutes away from the George Washington Bridge. I'm over across, this is about the crossing of the Bronx, New York. So you're in New Jersey, and you're yep. pick, picking us up loud and clear. Oh, gee, without a problem. It all depends on how your ADM, PM radio is, too, or how it's grounded. That's how it is. Yeah, I have a friend who lives in the garment district. In the city, but he can't pick it up because of the way his building is, you know, built. It's, it's too much metal or something, and he says he has a hard time picking up AM radio that's in New York. Yeah, well, usually an 18-wheeler, I mean, the radios we have in here are just fabulous, so it's... Uh, you know, how... how, uh, how, how uh, I mean, what's that? Let me ask you, how much are you paying for diesel fuel? Oh, uh, brother, you don't want to know. And how does that affect your life and, and in our products and services? You're a truck driver. Tell me. Well... It goes on, it's just a snowball effect. But that's what I mean right now, too, if you look, the diesel's just a little bit cheaper than an our regular unleaded gas. So it shelves us out a little bit, but still, a buck 75, a buck 80 a gallon, it's, it's killing us. I'm on my way up to uh, eastern Connecticut right now, where the prices up there are priced at buck 95, almost $2 a gallon. And that's for diesel. And that's for diesel. Wow, that's a lot of money. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's getting to a point where, you know, I might as well just put pure heating oil on here. It's cheaper. <laughs> yeah, can, you know, I've heard about people doing that with diesels, and you can convert it over to run on, say, scrap grease or oil from, you know, like when the bars and restaurants take that grease out and dump it behind the building. Yeah. Or peanut oil or something. You can convert your diesel to run on other stuff. Yeah, but when you do that, though, it's just, you know, you're asking for a lot of problems with the EPA and everything else, and inspects it. If it's not DOT certified, they won't go for it. Well, what about a private person with a diesel car? I wonder. I don't even know. I mean, I should know these things. I know about cars, but do diesel cars have to have an inspection? Um, actually, yes, they do. I mean, they go through. Uh, I mean, I live in Ohio as well, but uh, if you have a if you have a diesel automobile, you could. You know, you, you have to get an heat checked as well. No, oh, okay. Just, there, there's a certain standard they go. They don't go by the same standards as uh, what a regular car will, what the gas car will go into. But it's um, it's just the same. They put that, they put it in the exhaust pipe, and you know, put it on the dyno track. If it's uh, if it's front wheel drive or rear wheel drive, or if it's all wheel drive, they put the box on your uh, dashboard. Yeah, I had heard that some. Someone had mentioned to me, because my car is pretty old, I, didn't, I, I don't take newer cars in there because I don't own one, but they right. said the e-check now, some of the vehicles, because some of the people that work there are so dumb they don't even know whether it's front or rear-wheel drive, <laughs> that some of the newer cars, you can, they can just plug it in, and it goes through all the systems and then tells you right there what's, what's up or what's, you know, whether it's yeah, kosher. Uh, General Motors is starting that this year with all their cars. They're just uh, they're putting on a dyno tractor. There's, there's a... Uh, thing that you can put in uh, that you plug in underneath your dashboard. It'll put it up, up, up on your computer to tell you how much how much you're throwing out or, or whatever, you know? Yeah, well, that's convenient, I guess, as long as it yeah. doesn't break. Well, it just goes to show big brothers coming in, coming in the automobiles as well, you know? All right, Rich. Well, thanks for calling. Well, I got one more question. Oh, for sure, you. sure. Uh, you drive an older car, right? Yeah. Okay, I have a buddy of mine who uh, owns a moving company up here, up there in Cleveland, and, um, he had a car he just seized the title on because the guy wasn't making the storage payments on time. Okay. And it's a 1987 Toyota Supra. All right. I saw the car in shape, pearl white. It's got the target tops on it. 
It's got 95,000 miles on it. All right. Perfect. I mean, I was just up and down the stream, well, without a license plate on it. Well, well, yeah, well, nobody's listening, so, you know. Exactly. 38 states have Canada. Well, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, he's selling it to me for $1,500. All only thing he needs is detail. So, what's the question? Uh, well, what do you think? You think that's a decent buy for a little foreign shop that's about over 15 years old? Well, uh, you'd have to you'd have to go online and check to see what they're going for, but uh, anything that's in really nice shape like that's got to probably worth fifteen hundred bucks as long as it's mechanically all right. It's been sitting in storage. It's was it sitting inside or outside? Inside. And so it was nice dry storage, right? So it's not rusted out underneath. No, no, not speck of rust. Matter of fact, it's got the, the door over that cam six, the turbo, and the five speed. And everything works the way it should. Except for the stereo, that's it. Uh, you might have to break down and go to Best Buy. Yeah, I ain't worried about that. I'm worried about the mechanical. The turbo works good and all that sort of thing. Turbo's working fine. It's not, there's no blow by, no oil leak or anything, so... Something else heating. Something else you can do. Uh, do you, you, got a, you got access to a, to the Internet? Oh, yes. Okay, go to kbb.com. K-B-B? Yeah, K is in Kelly, B is in blue, and B is in book. KellyBlueBook.com. Oh, okay. And it'll give you different prices for different conditions. You can put in the mileage, what year the car is. Now, bear in mind that every time I've ever done that, my ex had a, a Beretta that it said was worth $2,300, and I knew it wasn't worth more than about... 15. So, uh, you know, bear in mind it's going to be a little high because they're giving you prices for what that car might go for in California or New York or Ohio. or But they vary, I think, from state to state because of the economies and how they change. I mean, if you're in Phoenix right now, that car might be worth $3,500. I don't know. You know, you got to... Uh, well, exactly. There's a door over that can. It takes a little bit more gas and... And fuel out there is just outrageous as well, so... Well, you just got to do a little homework on it, and you can also try looking it up on Consumer Reports or one of those that'll tell you whether or not it was a real stinker when it came out. They've, they've got books you can get that, you know, will tell you for an old car like that, you know, they were loaded with this problem and that problem, and if they were loaded with those problems when they were new, unless it was fixed under some type of warranty, then they, you know, if they're prone, let's say they're prone to a bad transmissions. Uh, okay. You know, I mean, I, I can't know everything about every model of car, but if they're prone to bad trannies, you know, you may end up putting one in it. Uh, that sort of thing, if, they, if, they, if they're leaning towards certain types of problems. So, okay. do a little homework on it, but it doesn't sound like a bad buy to me. Yeah, because this is like my first, uh, I mean, I tour around with cars a lot. As a matter of fact, my buddy and I, he just got a uh, 61 Cadillac four-door. And it's got the old 390 in it, and we just got that in uh, well, I'll tear you apart the engine, putting the drive shaft back on, and transmission lights, and new radiator, and everything else. And Did you put upper control arm bushings in it, too? Uh, yes, we did. Yeah, I could make a repair kit for old Cadillacs. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I mean, literally, I can tell you everything that goes wrong with them. And careful if you have to change the water pump, because you'll break them little bolts off. Make sure you spray it with JB, uh, or whatever they call that, uh, you know, the the the, oh. the, the, the blaster, PB blaster. Make PB you spray it. That's, that's better than WD-40. Uh, oh, it's the best. Just don't use it on your door hinges, because it's got an aroma <laughs> and that hangs around, and you don't want to smell that in your car. But use it on any kind of rusted bolt. Spray it like, like if you were going to bleed the brakes on it. You spray I believe you. Last week, I was spraying so much of that stuff, I was smelling it for about a week and a half in my nose. Yeah, well, you spray it, and then you come back the next day, and you spray it again. You before, you know, a week before you're going to take something that looks like it's going to break apart, keep spraying it every day for like a week, and then it'll come off like butter. Yeah, exactly. Well, Rick, i got to go. I'm about to pay my $30 toll. All right. Dumb, dumb bridge here. Well, thanks for checking in, and uh, call back sometime. Let me know how that car's going. Absolutely. I'll call you, you back next week because I'm about to pick it up this week. All right. Talk to you later. All right, bro. All right. Always nice to hear from people from Ohio and in other states that can actually prove the theory that the station does actually cover a large area. Like Jake in West Virginia. Yeah, well, I came across that uh, river, and now I'm in Ohio again, so... Oh, I see. Should I call back later on the east of the freaking Ohio River? No, 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 you're fine. Uh, anywho, yeah, uh, you know, uh, I drive truck, you know, out here on the super slab. Yeah. I never was cut out for a nine to five job. Just give me my 18 wheels and the open road. Sounds you like, say, sounds, you sounds, get to see the country. Sounds like a country song. <laughs> yeah, well, anyways, uh, that and doing trips, yeah, you get to hear, I mean, and you know what station, you get to know what stations you can pick up where and what stations you can't. Uh, you know, I ride down to Baltimore, 
uh, over up to Cleveland, Columbus, Buffalo, whatever. And you got you guys got you know basic coverage. You're not going to get it everywhere, like you said. Your buddy in the uh, in the slums of New York, there, you know, can't get it because of his building. Right. You know, and if you and if you can't get it, you want to get it. Spend the money and go buy a CC radio, you jerk. But, you know. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, when I was buying and selling a lot of cars. All cars had aerials, you know, they had antennas, right? Yes. And they weren't built into the windshield when GM decided to do that or whatever. They were regular, and when they would be broken off, the only station that the radio would pick up without an antenna was 1100. Back then it was 3WE, but now it's WTAM 1100, the original call letters again. But that, and, and you know, I hated it, because I just hated AM. When I was a kid, I just hated, I, I, I just didn't want to listen to AM radio, so I wanted to hear music. And, of course, people, people change. Now I want to hear information, and now my car, the FM works great, and I can't listen to it because the AM doesn't work. So <laughs> it's funny how things change like that. It's ironic, isn't it? Yeah, I guess it, well, I guess it is. Uh, so, uh, listen, okay, like I always said, one of my favorite thing to uh, go over there to Iraq, this freaking torture, thing, to A, call it torture, and B, to be talking about it for like eight weeks now uh, and everything. You know, I was asleep and my wife woke me up when 911 happened. Uh -huh. I never saw the people jumping out of the buildings or anything, and nobody will ever show it again. Why? You know, I mean, should, should we or should we not see that? You know, we're going to see, we already saw the torture photos, supposed it. Uh, you know, it, it seems ridiculous to me, and, um... It's interesting you mentioned being asleep, because I was sick in bed with the flu when 9-11 happened, and I don't recall... I, don't, I, I never saw anybody jumping out of buildings either, and, uh, really have no desire to. I mean, you know, it's, it's not well, like... Well, I'm just saying, the, the image to strike in you what was going on there and what the hell these people did. You know, they set the buildings on fire. You're on the, you know, 80th floor or wherever, and what are you going to do? You're going to get burned up? The, you know, you, you go too close to a fireplace. It's real hot. It's real, real hot. Imagine, uh, you know, Jet A on fire in your office. I, I cannot. You know what I mean? I cannot. I cannot imagine what would be going through someone's mind at the last minute before they realize that they're jumping to their death from the 80th floor of a building. I, I cannot imagine, and I hope to God that, n n that people won't have to imagine something like that. That's just horrible. Right. It, it just seems ridiculous to me that, that this is such a big deal. And uh, I, think the big, I think the big deal is that we should find out who said it was okay and make sure that they don't do that again by court-martialing sure. them. Absolutely, but is it a giant thing? They got, you know, their people doing the stuff to us. That doesn't make what we did okay. But you know, they're they're saying that there's uh, 14 other incidents that they're investigating, and two deaths, uh, you know, in the prisons, one in Afghanistan, and one in Iraq. You know what? Things happen, eh? So, you know, somebody's going crazy. What are you gonna do? I'm I'm putting a hole in them before they put a hole in me. It's a prison. It's a military prison. It's not. It's not the Girl Scout camp, eh? Yeah, yeah. I suppose if they uh, I, and I and you know the factor thrown in is that we. I'm sure this happens all the time in every war. You know what I mean? This this happens. Right. We don't. We don't know the attitude of the. Uh, they didn't do this to everybody. No. Why, why did they pick these particular ones? I'm not that I'm condoning it. I'm just wondering why did they pick these particular people to do this to? Maybe well, maybe they were per have... particularly evil before their guns were taken away. It could be that. Plus, you have to have the right situation. You have to have the right group of soldiers that are a little bit goofy to do this anyway. Because it's just just weird. You have to admit it's it's it's, it's weird. Oh, it's freaky. Well, you, you know, know, it's I call it the Lord of the Rings syndrome. Uh, not Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Flies syndrome. Check that. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I... Yeah, not Lord of the Rings. I don't know my mind ran away there for a moment. Uh, you know, Lord, of the, Lord of the Flies, 
where if you get people together in a certain situation, and of course that book being children, but I, it, obviously it's proven now from this abuse in the military that it happens, or just like uh, abuse by uh, hazing, you know, for, by frat houses, or that's right. or, or even you sororities. Get people together and convince them that this is the right thing. That that they can. Lord of the, Lord of the flood. Yeah, they nah, convince we it. They, a, we don't need to hunt and build a hut. Let's just go out and have some fun. Yeah, well, they're they're convincing each other that what they're doing is okay, right? They're their own support system. Yeah. And that's, yeah. the, that's why they did it, because they thought this was the right thing to do, because their buddy was doing it, too, and, then, and their buddy is their good buddy, and he couldn't be wrong, right? And then you're there, and, well, okay, well, if, he's, if he's looking some guy's testes up to a 240 line or a 220 line or whatever, you know, 220, 240, whatever it takes. And, and, you know, then they say, well, maybe I should do that, too, or let me in on the fun, let me in the picture, like you yeah. said. Yeah. And, and you, you know what, not to, I... You know, the military's cool relatives, friends. In fact, uh, a friend of mine in the uh, Navy SEALs just went over there a month ago. And, uh, you know, obviously you don't know where he's going, but he's over there and, uh, you know, Godspeed getting back. But, uh, you know, a lot of the people ain't the, uh, the best or the brightest. They might be brave. That might be that well, what they want to do. And then, you, you know, you're, oh, it's, it's a big mess. It's not a good thing. But you know what? It wasn't John McCain kept in the freaking cage. You know, it wasn't uh, the stuff that has gone on year after year, war after war, all over the world, you know. Pol Pot and his mountain of freaking skulls. And, and we, when something like this comes up, we're the scourge of the whole world. You know, we're the worst thing to come down the pike since Oldsmobile. I mean, hey, I to now I gotta go. Don't be bad mouthing Oldsmobile. I got Rick Gilmore's farewell to the Oldsmobile cruise in. Coming up June 19th at the Big Boy at West 130th in Brook Park. Starts at 5 in the p.m. We'll have music. We'll have fun. Bring your Oldsmobile. We'll hang out until it gets dark. Then I'll direct you where to go. We can go down the street to a watering hole. and <laughs> We'll have a good old time. Triple Doppler forecast from TV3 meteorologist Betsy King. Tonight, some thunderstorms here and there. Low 60s tomorrow. Cloudy. High, high in the mid-80s. So get out there and clean your white walls. Or whatever it is you do on a nice day like that. Go eat your lunch outside. Currently 79 degrees in Cleveland. 79. Remember, we still got the Harley Days of May contest. You can win $1,000 cash or a Harley FXD Dyna Superglide with the black. A beautiful black motorcycle valued at 10 grand every weekday. Got to write these numbers down. 1-866-525-WINS. W-I-N-S. That's one 866 Five two five nine four six seven. So enjoy the the Harley days of May. Brought to you by the big one, News Radio WTA eleven hundred. Now Bob's calling, and you want to know if a man can enter the the Queen for a game contest? Yeah, I'm Harry, and I like girls, but I uh, look like Madeline Albright. Oh my goodness! In a dress, so. Well, I, 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 well, Madeline Albright, you know, I can see her. Have you ever tried on a dress so that you could confirm that you look like Madeline Albright in a dress? Uh, only when people have hiccups. Okay. Well, I, 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 I don't know what to do with you. Um, well, do I have a chance? Well, I think maybe if you, if you went down there and you, you can't, you'd have to say your name was Roberta, not Bob. Well, what kind of massage would I get? Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't say what kind of massage. It's a half-hour massage. I know you get that. So, but you're hairy and you like girls. Well, I can be a queen for a day. I'll bet you could. I almost hit one of them. You could be queen for a day in your own house. This is queen for a game. I think you have to be a woman. I almost hit one of them. I was driving over to look at a car. I was over by, well, gee, go figure, 116th in Detroit. Right there on the Cleveland Lakewood border. And this fat lady is walking across the street wearing a pink halter top. And I'm thinking, what is big pot belly hanging out? And then I look and no, it's a fat queen. <laughs> dude looks like a lady, looks like a dude. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Drudge reports coming up after the top of the hour. I want to remind you if you're elderly and you're not feeling so well. You're thinking about leaving your large stash of cash to your cat. 
Remember who entertained you in your twilight years. Put me in your will. I'll put it to good use. Give some to Edmund. We'll tithe, right? We'll give our 10% to the church. And then we'll put the rest of the money to good use. We'll buy Bob and Sagamore Hills a push-up bra. And get them to parade around at the stadium. That's not what we meant by queen. Queen for a game is supposed to be a woman. All right? What kind of massage will you get? I'm, I'm certain it's a very... Let me check the details here. Does it say what kind of a massage? you have to listen to the Mike Trevisano program to find out more about that. Because it's coming up next Friday on Ladies' Night at Jacobs Field. If you're a lady, it says one lucky lady right here. We picked up by a limo, get a half-hour massage at the ballpark, have dinner for two at the Terrace Club, get a tribe wardrobe from the team shop, and then watch the Indians game on a throne with a tiara. I don't think that Bob from Sagamore Hills quite qualifies. Ladies can qualify to become a queen for a game. Starting tomorrow at 3 on the Mike Trevisano program. So, you know, think about this. Maybe someone's going to claim discrimination, right? Why does it have to be a woman to be queen for a game? You can claim it, but I wouldn't want to be the dude sitting in a tiara in front of 50,000 people in the TV cameras and all that sort of thing going on. Tamara, you're on the air. Hi, Gilly. Howdy. I just wanted to tell you, if that guy's still listening, he needs to run out and buy that Supra. That's a heck of a deal. 87 Supra for 1500 and no rust and, and 90,000 miles. I mean, it is Japanese. The thing will probably run till. Well, mine was a 93. My husband and I bought it for 18, sold it three years later on eBay for 22. A guy flew in, gave us cash. My son owned a black one. I don't know what yours his, his was. And same thing. Two guys flew in, paid him cash, and took off with the car. There you go. Thanks for the advice, Tamara. I love cars like that. Isn't it great when you could buy a car, drive it for three or four years, and then sell it for more money? You can find them once in a while. Well, maybe, uh, what was it, Rich? Was that his name, Rich in New Jersey? I think he needs to come back home and run out and buy his buddy's Toyota. There you go. I repeat again, Drudge Report coming up. After these important words and coverage of what in the world's happening, I'm Rick Kilmore, the thinking man's friend. Thanks, Edmund, for putting the strings and pushing the buttons and dials and keeping this program on track. And this is Cleveland's only news radio. WTAM 1100. I think it's a silly, crazy, hey. outrageous show. I think Burger. it's chewing gum. I think the world will be fine with it. The well, world will be fine without us. Without it, it's just a stupid show at times. And, and that's all it is. All right, there's enough of that. I got to go. See you all. The Big one.